Hi everyone! In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make this crochet stocking. It looks really ornate and intricate, but it's actually quite easy to make, so even if you're a complete beginner you should be able to make this. Let's get started! Alright, so let's go over our materials. The first thing you're going to need is a couple different colors of yarn. Um, now the yarn colors are pretty much your choosing. Today I'm using green and I'm using white. Now both of these are medium number four worsted weight yarns and I don't have the labels anymore so I can't tell you exactly how heavy they are. Uh, or not heavy but the ratio of grams to meters for those of you who don't have that numbering system. But I can tell you both of these re yarns recommend using a five millimeter crochet hook which is what we're using today so if you find a yarn that recommends a five millimeter crochet hook you should have about the same weight of yarn. Now this white yarn that I'm using is different from this green yarn that I'm using in that it is kind of a fuzzy yarn. I don't know if you can see that really well. But it's got a bit of um, a fuzz to it which I really like because that that creates a nice really effect, uh, really nice, that creates, <laughs> that creates a really nice effect because um, we're going to use this for the top of the stocking. So kind of like the white fluffy part at the top. Um, so in addition to your yarns, you're going to need a crochet hook that is compatible with your yarns. Now you don't have to use the exact same weight of yarns that I'm using. If you use a heavier weight of yarn, it's going to be a bigger stocking. And this stocking does turn out smaller than I'd say your average stocking. Yeah, so these stockings turn out slightly smaller than probably a store-bought stocking. Um, to give you an idea, this is, this is my stocking and I'm sorry I can't really show it all. Let me see. You're going to get to see my ugly table that I'm working at. This is the stocking that I used when I was a kid, and this is the stocking we're making today. And as you can see, it's slightly thinner, so it's a smaller stocking. It does stretch, but um, if you use a heavier weight of yarn, you're going to get a bigger stocking. If you use a lighter weight of yarn, you're going to get a smaller stocking, so it's really up to you what you want to do. But if you use a medium number four worsted weight yarn, you get just slightly smaller than, than kind of your average store-bought stocking. Although this one, just, <laughs> just to tell you the truth, uh, this one was purchased in like the 80s, or no, probably the 90s. This was purchased in the 90s. Um, so I don't know if lately stockings have gotten bigger because it seems like since that time everything has gotten bigger, at least if you live in the US. So just use that as a comparison for um, how big it's going to be and what what weight of yarn you want to use. So use a hook that is compatible with your yarn. Next we're going to need a tapestry needle that is big enough to thread your yarn. And that is everything we need to make this stocking. Okay, so for those of you looking for the written pattern, you can click the link in the description below and that will take you to studiocrafty.com where the written pattern is available for free. You can also look around there and see all of the other tutorials and tips and tricks and things that I have posted on there currently. This website is still pretty new, so I only have a couple things up there now, but I'm adding more every week. So let's get started. What we need to make this stocking is to make a bunch of granny squares. Um, and actually we're not actually we're not making squares, we're making granny shapes. I don't know if like if you're using anything other than a square, it's still called a granny square. But we're going to need a couple different shapes and I'm going to show you how to make each shape. So the first shape, or not the first, but the shapes that we're going to use are pentagons and hexagons and then we're also going to do one triangle. I haven't made the triangle yet because I'm going to show you how to make it. But for hexagons and pentagons we need a bunch of those. So I'm going to show you how to make each shape and then tell you how many you need to make um, and we can go from there. The first shape we're going to make is our triangle and you need your base color of yarn. And the first thing we need to do is make a slip knot. And the way we make a slip knot is we wrap the yarn around our finger just to make a loop. And then we pull through the middle the string that is still attached to our ball of yarn, like this. And it just makes a loop that you can adjust bigger and smaller. So stick your hook through and adjust the loop down. And now we're going to chain four. So we put the yarn over our hook and pull it through the loop. And that's one chain. 
yarn over again and pull through a second time. That's two, three, and four, just like that. And now we're gonna make a slip stitch in this first chain. So in this first chain that we made, stick your hook through, yarn over and pull through the first loop, and then pull again through the second loop. And we've made a little tiny ring out of chains. Now, some people prefer to use a magic ring, but for granny squares, I actually prefer to do the chaining method because I don't like it when the center ring uh, can come out and, and things like that. So uh, if you prefer to do a magic ring for this, you can do a magic ring, but I prefer to use chains for granny squares or a triangle in this case. So now we are going to chain three. So we chain one, two, and three. And next we're gonna do a double crochet. And the way we do that is we put the yarn over our hook like this, put our hook through the center of the ring we just made like that, yarn over, pull through. So now we have three loops on our hook, yarn over again and pull through one, two loops. So now we have two loops left, yarn over again and pull through the next two loops. So now we have our chains and then a double crochet. And this little short tail right here, you don't need to worry about that for now. Um, just make sure that you're, you're crocheting it into your work and we'll cut it once it's, it's well hidden. So we have our chains and our one double crochet. Now we're gonna do another double crochet. So we yarn over, put our hook through the center of the ring yarn over and pull our yarn back through the center, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. So we've just made chains and two double crochets. And the way this is gonna work is we're gonna do sets of three double crochets. Now, since this is our first set, uh, we did chains to start, but these chains are gonna count as one double crochet. So, so we're gonna work in, in units of three double crochets just like this, and that's, that's pretty much it. So now we're going to chain one, and we always chain between our groups of double crochets um, so that we have a clear division between the, the, the groups of crochets. Um, I keep referring to this as a cluster stitch. I know it's not a cluster stitch. <laughs> I, for the life of me, the name of this stitch is escaping me right now. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna refer to it as a cluster. Um, so just remember, strictly speaking, no, this isn't a cluster stitch, but it is a group of stitches. And strictly speaking, that is a cluster. So uh, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna refer to this from now on. I know it's got a name. I just can't remember what it is. So we double crochet three, chain one, and that's our cluster. So now we're gonna do another cluster. We're gonna double crochet three times. So we yarn over and make one double crochet. Yarn over again for two. Yarn over again for three. And then we chain one. And we've just made another cluster. And the way these work is Whatever shape you're making, each cluster will count as a point, I guess, on that shape. So since we are making a triangle, we need to make three of these clusters. If we were making a square, we would make four clusters, a pentagon is five clusters, and a hexagon is six clusters, and so on. So since we're doing a triangle, we need to do one more cluster. So we're gonna yarn over and double crochet one, yarn over again, and double crochet two, yarn over again and double crochet three. And then chain one. And now that we're all done, what we're gonna do is slip stitch into our first set of chains to join this together. So we chained three in the beginning. Normally if you're doing a double crochet, people like to chain two, but I find that it pulls when I do that, so I chain three. 
And then when I slip stitch, I'm going to slip stitch into the second chain. So we have one, two, three chains right here. And I'm going to slip stitch into this middle one. Um, that's not how everybody does it, but that's how I like to do it. So we've slip stitched. And now we've got this ring of clusters. So now we're going to pretty much do what we did in the last round. And we're going to start with three chains and then make some more clusters. So chain one, two, and three. And now we need to double crochet two more to finish this first cluster. So yarn over. And then right here in this space is where our two double crochets are going to go. So go through the front of this space and double crochet one. And then go through the front of that space again and double crochet a second time. We've just completed our first cluster. Now we chain one. And instead of going into this next double crochet right here, we're going to find our chain from the previous round, which is right here, these little spaces between our clusters, the chain space. And we're going to make our clusters in the chain space. So we yarn over. And in this next chain space, we double crochet three. So one, two, and three. And because we want our work to get wider, we're also going to do some increases. So in this round, we're actually going to do two clusters in each chain space. So we're going to chain one. And instead of moving on to the next chain space, we're going to do another cluster in this chain space. So we yarn over and double crochet one, two, and three. And we've just increased and our work is going to get wider because of this. So we chain one and now we're going to move on to the next chain space. And we yarn over and double crochet one, two, and three. And that's our first cluster in this chain space. And now we're going to chain one and do another cluster in the same chain space. So we double crochet one, two, and three, and then chain one. And when we started this round, we did one cluster in this first space. So now we need to finish it off by doing a second cluster in that same space. So the space right here, we're going to double crochet three, one, two, and three. So for each round, the starting cluster is actually going to be half of what would typically go in that space. And then we go work our way all the way around and finish off with the second half of this um, cluster increase. So now we chain one. And once again, we're going to slip stitch into the second chain. So find the second chain. And slip stitch. And as you can see, it's turning into a triangle. Now we're going to do one more round. So we have to chain three, one, two, and three, and double crochet two into this space right here. So double crochet one and two, and we've made a cluster. Now we're going to chain one. And in this next chain space, we're going to do one cluster. So the cluster increases where we do two clusters in one chain space, those are only going to be for the points of any shape that we're making. It's always the points. Any side that is or any chain space that isn't a point just gets one cluster in it. So this next chain space will only get one cluster. So we're going to double crochet three in this next chain space. One. Two. and three. And as you can see, this is the side of the triangle. So we're not going to increase in this chain space. So we need to chain one and we're going to move on to the next chain space. 
and double crochet three. One, two, and three. And because this is a point, we are going to chain one and make another cluster in the same chain space. So we yarn over and chain one, two, and three, or sorry, chain one and double crochet three. So we've made another cluster, we chain one, and go into the next chain space and make one cluster. One, two, and three, and then chain one and move on to the next chain space and make a cluster. Ooh, hello, okay, sorry. Move into the next chain space and make a cluster. One, two, three, and then we're gonna chain one and make another cluster in the same chain space. One, two, and three. And then we chain one and move into the next chain space and make a cluster. One, two, and three. And then chain one and finish off this point up here by making one more cluster. One, two, and three. And then we chain one and slip stitch into this second chain from our first set of three chains. So we slip stitch, and that's it. We're all done with our triangle. So you can take your scissors and cut your yarn. You don't need to cut a super long tail. Well, actually for the triangle, I would recommend that you cut a kind of a long tail because we're gonna use it to sew, sew this together. So actually do cut yourself a bit of a long tail and we can use it to sew most of our other granny shapes together. And then we can flip it over and if you weaved your yarn tail into this circle, you can cut it. If you haven't weaved your tail into the circle and it's still just dangling off the chain, take your tapestry needle and weave it in. But otherwise, you can just cut it. If you don't weave it in and you cut it as is, then the entire thing can come unraveled. So just make sure that you weaved it in um, when you start any of your shapes. And we've made a triangle. And this is gonna be the very bottom of our stocking. Next, we're gonna learn how to make a pentagon and we need to make three pentagons. I'm gonna show you how to make one and then you can rewind this video to make the other two. So just like we did before, we are going to make a slip knot by wrapping the yarn around our finger and pulling up through the middle of the loop. And this time we are going to chain five. So chain one, two, three, four, and five. So depending on what shape I'm making, I like to chain as many points as I'm gonna have. So since we're making a pentagon, I chain five. Um, when we did the triangle, I chained four. That's because four is the minimum number of chains I'll do. I won't do less than four chains because then it, it becomes hard to work with. But after that, if I'm making a shape that's five-sided, I'll do five chains. If I'm making a shape that's six-sided, I'll do six chains, just to make sure that I have enough room in this center ring. So now we need to slip stitch to join the first and last chain together. So slip stitch into this first chain that you made. And now we're gonna chain three. One, two, and three. And now we're gonna do five clusters. So this first chain is your first double crochet for your first cluster, and then we need to do four more regular clusters. So make five clusters. So 
So this is our first cluster, and then chain one, and go in for your second cluster. That's two clusters. We chain one and go in for a third cluster. So that's three clusters. Chain one and go in for your fourth cluster. That's four. And then we chain one and go in for our fifth cluster. So now we have five clusters and we're going to chain one and then slip stitch into the second chain to join this round together. Now for you more experienced crocheters out there, you may be wondering why I'm only chaining one between my clusters. A lot of times people like to chain two between their corner clusters. I don't like that because the corners become too pronounced at that point, so I just like to chain one. So for you more experienced crocheters out there who are wondering why I'm only chaining one, that's why. So now we're going to do another round and we're going to do five cluster increases. So we need to chain three, one, two, and three. And then we're going to single crochet two more to complete this cluster. One and two, and it just occurred to me I said single crochet, I meant double crochet. <laughs> and we're going to chain one. And then in this next chain space, we're going to do our cluster increase where we do two clusters in one chain space. And we're going to do that all the way around until we get back to this chain space where we'll do another cluster to finish off this increase. So just like we did with the triangle. So in this next chain space, we're going to make a cluster. And then we're going to chain one. And in the same chain space, we're going to make another cluster. Now we're going to chain one and move on to the next chain space and make a cluster. And then chain one and make another cluster in that same chain space. And you can see our corners starting to form. So move on to the next chain space and do two clusters. So that's one cluster and then chain one and go back in for my second cluster. And then chain one and move on to the next chain space and do another two clusters. So that's one and then chain one and do your other cluster. And never forget to do your chain one between clusters or else it's gonna be really hard to figure out where you need to, to crochet next. So always, always make sure you're doing your chain one between clusters. So chain one and then in this chain space where we started, we're gonna do one more cluster And then we're going to chain one and slip stitch into the second chain to finish off the round. So as you can see, our pentagon shape is forming. Now we need to do one more round and we'll be done. So we yarn over and chain one, two, and three, and do two double crochets to finish off this first cluster. And then chain one. And just like in the triangle, when we're crocheting along the side, this chain space right here will form part of the side. We do one cluster and anytime we're crocheting into a point, we do two clusters and that will help to widen it out. So we need to make one cluster in this first chain space.
Then we chain one and move on to the next chain space and do two clusters. So that's one, and then we chain one and do our second cluster. Then we chain one and move on to this next chain space where we will make one cluster. And then we chain one and move on to this point chain space where we will make two clusters. And we chain one and go back in for our second cluster. And then we're just gonna repeat that same pattern for the rest of the round. So in this chain space, I'm doing one cluster. And in the next chain space, I'm doing two clusters. and moving on for one cluster. And onto the next space for two clusters. So if you're brand new to crochet, this may seem a little overwhelming, but if you just keep, keep going with it and make sure that you practice and uh, rewind this video, if you're confused about anything, just give it a rewind and, and watch the video again. And eventually you'll, you'll become so automatic with this that you won't even have to think about it. But when you first start crocheting, it can be a little intimidating. Uh, I understand we were all beginners at one point. Okay, so I did two clusters, then one cluster. And now I'm almost at the end. I just need to do one more cluster in this top point. And then I chain one and slip stitch into the second chain from my first cluster. And that's it, we're all done with our pentagon. So you need to make three of these pentagons. So make sure that you rewind this video and you don't need to cut a long tail for these pentagons. Just a short tail will do. Not too short, because if it's too short, then it's gonna come unraveled. So make sure that it's long enough that it won't come unraveled, but you don't need to sew anything together with it. So make three pentagons. So you can rewind this video and watch it again to learn how to uh, be reminded of how to make the other two. Uh, and then we can move on once you have three of these. All right, so now that we have our three pentagons completed, we can move on and learn how to do the hexagons. Now the hexagon and the pentagon, pretty much the exact same procedure. The only difference is we're gonna be doing six clusters in our pentagon or in our hexagon and we did five in the pentagon. For now, set these pentagons aside with your triangle and we will do the hexagon. So now we're gonna make a hexagon and you need to make eight of these hexagons. So I'm gonna show you how to make one and then we're gonna do the, uh, sorry. So I'm gonna show you how to make one and then you can rewind this video to do the other seven. So once again, we need our base color yarn and we're going to make a slip knot. And you should be pretty familiar with this whole procedure by now. So now we're gonna chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're gonna slip stitch into the first chain. Okay. And we're gonna chain three. One, two, and three. And we're gonna double crochet two to finish off this first cluster. So one and two. 
And because we're making a hexagon, we need to make six clusters total. So we've made one and we need to make five more. And six, so we've made six clusters. If you're noticing this hole in the center is a little big, you can pull on your tail and that should kind of tighten it up a little bit, but don't pull it too tight or else it'll get really floppy. All right, so we're gonna slip stitch into the second chain to join our rounds together. And once again, we're gonna chain three. One, two, and three. And we're gonna do two double crochets to finish off this first cluster. So that's two. And just like with our triangle and our pentagon, this next round is gonna be all cluster increases. So in every single chain space, make two clusters. So in this, ooh, in this first chain space, it, here's one cluster. Chain one and go back into that same chain space for a second cluster. So now we chain one and move on to the next chain space to crochet two clusters. And then we chain one and slip stitch into the second chain to join it together. So this should all seem very, very familiar to you by now. Um, really, if you're making other shapes, you know, whatever shape you want to make, if it's a triangle, a pentagon, a hexagon, any symmetrical uh, shape that, that is symmetrical from four sides, so any shape in the round. And I'm going to show you how to make half of a hexagon as well, um, but that comes later. Um, so any shape you want to make, you can pretty much use this technique to make any symmetrical shape you want to make um, and it works pretty much the same for any shape any any you know polygon that is parallel on all sides okay so we need to do one more round so we're going to chain three one two and three and we're going to make two double crochets to finish off this first cluster Then we're going to chain one, and in this first chain space, we're going to make one cluster. So it's going to be one cluster, two cluster, one cluster, two clusters, one cluster, two clusters. Um, two clusters go at the points. One clusters, one cluster goes at the flat side. So you should know pretty well where you need to do one cluster versus two clusters. So I'm not really going to explain it any more than that at this point because you've made so many of these already that you probably don't need that instruction. So let's get going. All right, so I've come to the end. Now I'm gonna chain one and slip stitch into the second chain. And I am all done with my hexagon. So I'm gonna cut just a couple inches for the tail. And you all right, so we've just finished our hexagon and now you need to make another seven more. So I will meet you back here when we have all seven of our hexagons. So I've got all eight of my hexagons completed and now we are ready to move on. And for now, we're just gonna set them aside with our pentagons and our triangles. And we just have one last thing we need to do, which is to make this shape right here. This is actually a third of a hexagon. So if you take this hexagon and you line it up, this is a third of that. So you could get three of these on here. Um, and the reason why we're doing that, I'm gonna show you because I feel like things are easier to understand if you know what the purpose is. Um, in this stocking, you can see that we sew all of our shapes together. And if we were to just stop right here, you would get this really jagged shape at the top and it makes it really hard to do this top portion. So we have these third hexagon shapes here in order to make the top nice and even so that we can do some stitching in there. So that's what that's for. It's for the very top to make sure that 
when I finish off, it's nice and flat. And that's what we're doing that for. I actually have not seen any other patterns that do this sort of thing where they take it in half. I'm sure there are. I don't really look at patterns that much. Um, but this is the way that I like to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do it now. And you need to make three of these. I've already made two. So I'm going to show you how to make the last one. And you can rewind this video to make all three of yours. So once again, we need our base color yarn. And we are going to make a slip knot and chain four. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to slip stitch to join them together. Ooh, come on. And we're going to do it just like we have with all of our other shapes. And we're going to start by chaining three and double crocheting two in the center, if I can find the center. In the center, there we go. One and two. And then we're gonna chain one and we're gonna make one more cluster. So now we have two clusters. And we're not gonna join these together. We're not gonna go over here and slip stitch and join them together um, because we want this top part to be the flat part. So what we are going to do is right now we are going to chain three, one, two, and three. So now what we're going to do is instead of joining this together and crocheting in the round, what we are going to do is we're gonna flip it this way. And then in this first kind of stitch right here, let me zoom in to show you. So our chains are coming off the stitch and we're actually gonna complete our cluster in this stitch right here. So going in right there to do our other two double crochets. Just like that. Um, because we don't have like a chain space there. Now our next one will be in our regular chain space and we're gonna do what we do all the time and we're gonna make two clusters in this chain space. But because this is a bit of a special, special shape, it's gonna be a little different than what we would typically do. So once you have your first cluster, you can chain one and move into your second chain, or not really your second chain space, into your only chain space and make two clusters. Okay, so we've got three clusters total right now. We have one, two, and three. And now we're gonna chain one and we're gonna do one more cluster and the place where we're gonna do clustering this time is I'm gonna zoom in. Um, our three chains from before, we're not actually gonna go through this top chain. We're just gonna pull our chains out like this and go through this space right here. So I'm gonna go into this entire space, just like that. And I'm gonna make, ooh, that's a single crochet. And I'm gonna make my cluster that way. So we make our cluster just through that entire set of chains. Just like that, and it's kind of acting as our chain space. And now we're gonna chain three, one, two, and three. And we're gonna turn our work just like we did last time. And just like last time, in this first kind of stitch space right here, we're going to make our other two double crochets to finish off this cluster. Just like that. And then we're going to chain one. And in this next chain space, we're going to make one cluster. And I keep wanting to single crochet for some reason, so go into this next chain space. 
and do your three double crochets. And then we chain one and in this next chain space we are going to do two clusters. So that's one. And in the same chain space, we go back in for two. Okay, so we've just made two clusters. Now we're gonna chain one. And in this next chain space, we're gonna do one cluster. And then we're gonna chain one. And just like we did last time, we're gonna pull out our chains from the beginning of this round, and we're gonna make our cluster right in that space. So make one cluster in that space. Three, okay. So now we're gonna do the really weird part, and we're actually gonna do some single crochets right across the top. So first we need to chain one, so we chain, and I'm gonna zoom in again to try and show you what's going on here. So if we were to pull out our double crochet, you would find a space right here. So in this space, we're gonna do two single crochets. So to do a single crochet, you put your hook through the space. So normally you would yarn over and put your hook through, right? We're not gonna do that this time. We're just gonna do a single crochet. So without yarning over, just put your hook through and pull your yarn through. So you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through, and that's one single crochet. Now we're gonna go back in and make our second single crochet. So we're gonna do two single crochets in all of these double crochet and chain spaces. So we've just done two in this next chain space right here. We're gonna single crochet again, another two. So we've made four so far, one, two, three, four. In this next space, one thing you'll notice is that in this next space, it looks like there's two spaces. That's actually one double crochet. So you can either do two double crochets in this space or two double crochets in this space or just one in each space, right? But this, this kind of post needs to have two single crochets in it. Sorry, I keep saying double crochets. I mean single crochets. So we go in for one double crochet and two, or ah, I said double crochet again, single crochet. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? And if you count your stitches, you should have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're at the center where we made our chains. In the center ring part, we're only gonna do one single crochet. So we go in, do one single crochet, and now we're moving on to the next side. So in this chain space right here, we're gonna do two single crochets. In the next space, we're going to do two single crochets. And in this last group of chains, we're gonna do another two single crochets. And if you count your stitches, you should have 13 stitches. So you should be able to count one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And we're all done, so we're gonna chain one just to finish off and really pull that chain nice and tight because you don't wanna mistake it for a stitch later. And then we're gonna cut a tail. It doesn't need to be a super long tail. And then this tail from my magic ring, which I've weaved in, I'm actually, you're not my magic ring from my chains. I'm just gonna cut it just like all the other times. And that's it, that's how you do that. And it's a third of a hexagon. So you need three of these, right? I'm trying to like figure out how, how this would go. They would need to like overlap or something like that. Anyway, you can't really put them together like that, but we're gonna line them up like this anyway. 
So that's that. And with this, we have made every single shape we need to put this all together. So it was a little tedious, but we, I like to have everything in place before I start sewing together just to make sure that I have enough materials. So we've got everything we need and now we can actually start to sew it together.